Well, another problem for Boris Johnson is the rising cost of living for families around the country. Boris Johnson's under pressure from some of his own MPs to slash VAT on energy bills. And it's now emerged there's even a cabinet rift after Jacob Rees-Mogg reportedly urged the Prime Minister to reverse the recent national insurance hike that's due to come into place in April. Well, yesterday, the Conservative MP, John Penrose, asked the Prime Minister about the cost of living crisis in the Commons, and he joins us now. Very good afternoon to you, uh, John. Uh, First of all, do you agree uh, with Jacob Rees-Mogg? He seemed to raise this in the Commons, that now is not a great time to be raising taxes, given rising inflation, particularly when it comes to energy. Well, well, I'd I'd make two comments, I think. The first one is that you played earlier in your news clip uh, a, a quote from, I think, Grant Shapp saying, look, this is a collective decision. So individual members of the cabinet um, will all have signed up to that one way or another. So they should be all of them on the same page on this, whatever their sort of initial starting points were. But also, I think that there's a, a, a broader point to make, which is that it's, I mean, I, I'm, a, I'm a Tory and therefore I, I like lower taxes rather than higher ones. Absolutely right. But also, the Conservative Party stands for sound money, for not spending money that we don't have. and you know, creating vast bills which our children and our grandchildren are going to have to pay for us in years to come. So you can't just you know, run up the nation's credit card and spend money you haven't got. And both those two things, you know, low taxes, but also you know, not, not just uh, you know, running up your debt, both those things are important. And that's why if we're going to get rid of some of the huge backlogs that have built up in, you know, in elective surgeries for hips and knees and things like that um, over the course of the COVID, if you over the, COVID, the pandemic, if you're going to get through that backlog, then we are going to have to spend a bit more money in doing it. So I, I don't like the idea of higher taxes, and I voted for it with a slightly heavy heart when I did, but I can see it's necessary um, in the short term to get through that backlog. It's got to be done. Uh, well, of course, one of the things that might wear, eat away at the government's debt is inflation, and it's going to reach at very high levels this year, levels we've not seen for decades A lot of people will have voted uh, for Brexit and the Conservative Party in the hope that actually uh, they may have seen tax cuts, particularly when it comes to VAT on energy bills. Is this something the government should genuinely be exploring? Well, the point I was making in the Commons yesterday is that um, the the major change in what's going on with our energy bills, it isn't being driven by VAT or or green levies or these sorts of things. But they're, they're a factor, yes. But the really big change, the thing that's driving most of the pain for all of us and is going to get worse over the course of the next, com- of the next couple of months as well, is actually the increase in the international price of gas. And that's actually being driven by some decisions taken in Moscow because they stopped pumping as much gas. It all comes across to the rest of Europe in, in a series of pipelines. And that's driving up the international price. And ultimately, that means that the, it knocks through to British um, energy bills as well. And so the point I was making to the Prime Minister is, look, actually, in the medium term, you can fiddle around with you know, schemes to do things with you know, that or whatever, but it's not going to make you know, a, a big difference and it's not going to make a long-term difference. What we've actually got to do is to decouple ourselves, make ourselves independent from our reliance on this sort of European um, gas price, which is ultimately driven by decisions in Moscow. We've got to become much more self-sufficient, much more self-sufficient in energy so that no matter you know, the IRA, you know, indeed, people in other parts of the world, whatever decisions they take, those, you know, th- those decisions don't matter to us because we've got our own resources here. It is, it is fascinating you touch upon Moscow there, and it is entirely possible in the coming weeks, depending what happens in Ukraine and indeed potentially in Kazakhstan, that there could be further sanctions against uh, Moscow, there could be further limitations to their supply of energy uh, to Europe. But in many ways, John, that, 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 those are long-term uh, things in terms of what you've been talking about sorting out. Many people are in a position now in which they're seeing the energy bills increase by 50% this year at a time when everything else is going up. Surely that is the stage at which the government, you know, looks, of course, at long-term energy needs, but focuses on what needs to happen here and now. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think that... Uh, we should say it's either or. We, they, ministers may have to do something in the short term. Uh, that um, may be the wrong thing to do because it helps the, the rich disproportionately more than it helps the poor. But they may need to do something in the short term. The point I'm making is that what I'm worried about is that all the discussion, um, other than on programs like yours today, 
all the discussion so far has been about all these short-term issues. And ultimately, we've got to fix the long-term stuff. And we've got to start doing that today as well, because otherwise we're going to be in the same situation again this time next year when the cold weather comes. And actually, if we fix the long-term problem, um, then we won't have this recurring issue. Uh, and we will have dealt with a much bigger series of, of changes to the gas price and changes to our energy bills, and we'll be insulated against them you know, forever. So we can't just do the short-term stuff. We've got to do both. We can't just ignore the longer-term things just because they aren't immediately the burning platform today. Just very finally, John, while we've got you, uh, just on energy supply from Moscow, uh, Nord Stream 2, of course, is a big issue, particularly in Germany, uh, that pipeline uh, that is due to be switched on relatively soon. Uh, do you think, given the political context, uh, it would be a mistake uh, for Germany to allow that to go ahead? Well, I think Germany will have to make its own decisions. Um, but of course, you are right to say that, you know, that it will increase uh, many people, not just Germany's, but many people's dependence on on Russian gas. So Germany must make its own decisions for what's right for them. But from the British point of view, we need just to make sure that we are, our energy bills here aren't being driven by what's happening to the price of gas in the rest of Europe. And that price of gas in the rest of Europe is being affected by decisions made in Moscow. So if we can get ourselves to be uncoupled from that, independent from that, and not only will, will we be safer and more secure in the national security sense, but actually our energy bills will be permanently and sustainably lower. And that's going to be better for both households and for businesses too. Okay, John, appreciate your time. Thank you very much indeed. That's the Conservative MP for Western Supermare, John Penrose, joining us.